trainers welcome back to another video today we are checking out that's right it is great league remix cup time now i have not played this meta so far actually except i have heard a lot of people talking about it being a charm user meta a lot of charm users not being banned like alolan ninetales as well as new pokemon who couldn't be banned because they weren't in the game last season such as annihilate so i'm thinking it's time to bring back the bee drill it's time to bring the bee back baby so we're gonna go hunting for some charm users here. Let's get right into it. And getting right into the first battle here, we have Annihilate versus Solazzle. I actually have no idea how this matchup goes, but those incinerates are chunking us quite a lot. Now, Poison Fang uh, will be resisted because of the ghost typing, but that's still a lot of damage. And on top of that, with all the incinerates going through, this is not a winning matchup. We throw on a bad timing, however, we know we're not going to win anyway, so we really just wanted to get out that shield and bring Swampert in here. Swampert being able to resist everything that Salaz was throwing, as well as dealing super effective mud shots to be able to farm down. They're going to let this go too, and look how much damage that Salazzle is doing. But there we go, we found it, they insta-swapped the Charmer, and it is Drill's time to shine. Farming all the way down there, having all of this energy, and even being able to get the Poison Jab down on the Salazzle, and they just FF with all that energy on both of my Pokemon, and having two shields. Going right into game number two. So far, so good. We found one Charmer already. Let's see if we can find another one, but we found a Toga Demaru in the lead. Now, this is a weird matchup. I mean, we win, so he's gonna swap into uh, Frostlass here. Now, because we have our energy advantage and all three of our Pokemon have good play into Toga Demaru, we're gonna stay in here and throw some Night Slashes, see if we can start getting some shields, and if we get the boost, we can even counter down. So he actually lets the first one go, which I wasn't expecting. We get the second one, this is the shield here. We still don't have a boost, but we are in a position to counter down. And since we've seen that Togedemaru in the front, and we know that we are good to fight it with pretty much anything here, especially Swampert, we are gonna keep switch farm all the way down. In comes a Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz not great for this team, as we have uh, Annihilate and Beedrill, but we still have Swampert, and there's the boost. I believe that is the first time I have ever gotten a Night Slash boost on Annihilate. Um, and so, with the boost, somehow we get the shield. Um, I wonder if our opponent was thinking we could have had Ice Punch, because that is an option. Um, but we're actually going to just come right in here with Swampert. Mandaba is throwing the energy, it's just Aerial Ace. Now this energy will add up, however, Swampert does outspam. Swampert gets there very quickly, and again, we know that we have a good matchup in the back as well, because a single drill run will annihilate that Togenomaru in the back. So we just need to get to one more Hydro Cannon here, and we get there just in time before the next Aerial Ace comes to kill us. And we're going to quickly swap into Beedrill and get that quick 2 turn versus 3 turn snipe down there. Token tomorrow, we know that one wild charge, while it's going to hurt a lot, it will not kill us. So we get to the drill run here, and that is GG for game two. So going into game three, a Golbat in the lead. So recognizing now that Flyer leads are not great for this team because Swampert is our answer. However, our opponent is not switching out, so we get to start throwing these Hydro Cannons. The first shield does go up and our opponent switches into Steelix. Uh, I'm assuming this might be a misclick uh, or perhaps their team is just super, super weak to Steel or to Swampert and maybe doesn't have another Annihilate answer outside of that Golbat. So we're throwing straight Earthquake so that we can guarantee this two shield advantage or just knock out the Steelix pretty much right there. Um, getting our Hydro Cannon off, Steelix is at 1 HP just about. So we're going to let this last Psychic things go through and knock us out so Annihilate can farm up with that 2 shield advantage. Our idea here is that we can throw Shadow Ball. Now we're shielding because the Golbat did shield himself and farm all the way up. So it could be Poison Fang, it could be Shadow Ball. But just in case, since we do have Beedrill in the back and Beedrill's not going to do anything here, our goal is to then land that Shadow Ball, but Crawdont comes in? Uh, Crawdont, <laughs> have not seen this Pokemon in a long time. Perhaps this trainer is hunting Frostlass, but this Aerial Ace will knock out. You saw how much damage just the Poison Jabs were doing. Uh, we are going to, instead of soft losing, we're just going to go straight for the win there because Annihilate will win CMP here, so we just want to knock out that Pokemon, and we just barely don't get the KO. Now, if this is Poison Fang, 
which it is we have just enough HP to quickly under tap onto that Night Slash, making sure we don't go for one more counter because the, uh, the extra damage from that Poison Fang debuff could knock out. So we get the Night Slash to win. Annihilate into Mantine. Now, this is quite possibly uh, the worst flyer that <laughs> we could have run into. Because normally our answer to this flyer, or to any flyer, would be Swampert. Uh, but Swampert doesn't really do any damage to Mantine. Because normally the play would be go for Hydro Cannons, but those are resisted here. So this battle uh, plays out pretty much exactly as you think it would. And uh, yeah, so we lose this battle. There's not really a whole lot. It's just the GVL way. Coming back to game four. So once again, a flyer in the lead. However, with it being Shadow Pidgeot, we have a little bit more play into it than something like a Mantine or possibly even a Golbat. As Mantine and Golbat both resist counter, Golbat double resisting counter with that poison and flying type. Uh, but Pidgeot being neutral to counter, we have an option with Annihilate, especially if we get a boost. So we draw out, they have a grass type. Now that we've seen they have two shadows, I'm fully expecting their third Pokemon to also be a shadow, in which case our charge moves and holding shields could be pretty big here. We do have to figure out some way to beat this Pidgeot, um, but it is running Gust, which is a four turn move. So we outpace it in terms of just turn duration with a lot of other things. But in comes Ninetales. Uh, I believe, yes, that is also a Shadow Ninetales. We do get the last shield here, and this is our win con here, is that we get a little bit of farm on Annihilate to start the battle back into Pidgeot, doing neutral damage versus this Pidgeot while it is dealing super effective. However, we have shields and Pidgeot is Shadow without shields. So we get this last Night Slash off, and I believe this is enough to kill a Shadow Pidgeot. Oh no, not even close, hold up. <laughs> this is, but the snipe down from that Beedrill actually ends up coming in really clutch here. We still have this shield saved. Now, I don't think one Fire Spin kills, but two will, but we are two turn versus three turn, so we get the two Poison Jabs off to get the Drill Run to win the game with one HP. And that concludes those battles. I believe that leaves us at a 4-1 overall, including running into uh, several flyers um, in the lead as well and being able to pull off those wins. So GG's trainers. Thank you all for watching. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and let me know in the comments what Pokemon you guys have been running for the Remix Cup.